live football action now in BBC One Scotland as Hearts take on Rangers. Sports scene match of the day introduced by Richard Gordon. A big crowd expected at Tynecastle, both sides with reasons for optimism. For Hearts, it's the start of a new era under Craig Levine. Rangers, following success domestically and in Europe, are unbeaten in seven, and looks have got their season back on track. For all sorts of reasons, it could be a special 90 minutes coming up live. Hearts against Rangers. Good afternoon, welcome to the third of BBC Scotland's live SPL matches. With us are two special guests, two men who know all about this fixture, Paul Ritchie and Trevor Stephen. We'll hear from the guys in just a moment. Let's quickly, Phil, get the team news from Tynecastle. Chick Young. One change in each team. Hearts bring in Robbie Nielsen to replace Gary Locke. That means that they will line up with a Niemi in goal. Presley, Petric, Fulton, Cameron, Grant Murray, Seven, Wanjo, Kirk. Nielsen and Gordon Jury playing against his old teammates on the bench for Hearts. Lock, McSwiggan, Tomaszek, Milne and the subject goalkeeper Roddy McKenzie. Rangers bring in Torrey Andre Flo. He replaces Michael Moles, who I understand will be fit for the European tie in Germany on Thursday. That's the only change. Stefan Kloss in goal, Amar Amaruso, Newman, Ferguson, Alberts, Rainer De Boer, Conterman, Wilson, Flo and Kenny Miller. On the bench for them, Billy Dodge, Tugai, McCann, Morris Ross, and the subject goalkeeper Jesper Christensen. The referee here at St. Castle is Stuart Diggle. Thanks to Chick. Um, Paul, first of all, Craig Levine's first team was hard for us, and it's uh, a very attacking side. It definitely is. I think he's stamped his authority on the, the team already. I think him and Peter uh, chose the team together. And I think with Wanjo playing and uh, with the two strikers, it, it can go to a 4 3 3 as well. And does that make sense, uh, a big game like this, first one at home, to, to show a statement of intent almost to the fans? I think it does. I think at home, even if it is against the old firm, you've got to go and try and attack them and uh, try and score some goals. And I think they're solid enough at the back to do that. Trevor, given Rangers' recent performance, it's no surprise that they haven't made many changes, I don't suppose. No, I don't think so. <coughs> they're certainly coming back to form that uh, you'd expect from a Rangers side. Um, results have been better of late. I think they've eventually got over the uh, defeat against Celtic. And uh, they're now moving into another gear. And uh, this should be a really exciting game today. Obviously, Hearts have got the incentive and... Uh, the impression that the players want to make with uh, Craig Levine being there. But uh, Dick Abbott is obviously trying to get his team back onto uh, the level that he'd like to see them playing every week. And if you're going to be without Michael Moles, having Tony Andre Floor mm. to come in is no bad thing, is it? Yeah, it's a, great, it's a great boost. It was a great signing for Rangers. It was expensive, but it was needed. And it's had the desired effect. Uh, now, coming in today, is a uh, game he's, he's rested, hasn't played against Leverkusen during the week. And I think it's going to be, uh, that's the problem area I think Hearts are going to have today. Dealing with Kenny, uh, Kenny Miller and Todd Andrew Flo up front. Kenny Miller, like yourself, a young guy who went to Ibrox, he, he had to wait, he, he's got his chance now. Paul. He definitely has and he's grabbed it with both hands. Uh, he's scored a number of goals, both at the uh, Premier League level and in Europe. He's waited on his chance and uh, he's done very well for Rangers in the, the past few games. OK, let's hear briefly from both managers, Dick Advocates, to come. First up, Craig Levine with Chick. The team has been selected, one change in the heart side now. Is it your team selection or is it Peter Houston's? Yeah, we, well, there's a number of things I had to think about, and uh, Peter and I discussed well, two things mainly. One, whether I would be down on the bench. Uh, we came to the conclusion that, look, we're in this together, so there's no point in me sitting up there and washing my hands of the whole thing, you know. So, first uh, decision was to be down here alongside everybody else, um, celebrating if we win, and uh, looking forward to the next game if we lose. <laughs> <laughs> the games against Hearts are always from, from a good quality. The, 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 the last three the year season, the two and a half season that I played there, it was always good quality, uh, great atmosphere, and uh, and a real battle. 
and uh, I expect that uh, this Sunday as well. Flow will be back, so that is an advantage, and uh, one of one of the other two can can uh, can rest. That what that's the good thing what we can do now with the, an almost full fit squad. Uh, if you are not fit and you feel not comfortable, yeah, then you, then we can change that. But again, if I still think that everybody wants to play. The advocate talking on Friday. We heard from Craig Levine about half an hour ago, and there he is now. He is being introduced to the Hearts fans, along with a man who will be his assistant manager, Peter Houston. And uh, well, he's getting a great response. And, and Paul, you know him very well. You, you would expect that sort of response. Definitely, I think um, the fans, the fans' number one choice, him or John Robertson. And I think for all the, the trouble that Hearts have been in the last two or three weeks, I think the fans will appreciate the, the chief executive's decision to make Craig the manager. And do you think Trevor has the qualities needed to make a success? I would like to think so. He's, he's still very uh, young in the game of management and he's got a lot to, uh, to prove, a lot to learn yet. And he'll use Peter uh, Houston as much as he possibly can just to feed off ideas and, and some support there. But you need to get a good start. It's going to be tough today, but uh, I think Craig will do well in the long run. Overall, the, the, the experience at Cowden B, down at the bottom, will that yep. be a big plus for him going into this job? I'm a great believer in that uh, if you're going into management, you need to really learn at base level uh, and learn all the difficult parts and the not so nice parts of management and they certainly had no money to play with at Cowden Beath. You had to really rally the troops week in week out to, uh, to get to where they've got at the top of the second division at the moment. It was full credit to them for doing that and Craig's responsible for it. So uh, I think he's got what it takes but it's going to take a time and the Hearts fans need to be patient. He's also been through all the ups and downs at Tynecastle over a long period himself Paul, isn't he? I think that's a, the good thing as well. He's um, played under four or five managers through the good times and bad times at Tyne Castle. So he knows what's expected from the supporters and from the, the board of directors. He knows the club's in a, a difficult situation at the moment, financial-wise. So he knows he has to sell before he can actually buy. And I think he'll do that, and he'll do it to his best day of his ability. How do you think he'll face up to this? Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's almost, in some ways, an ideal start. In other ways, perhaps, the, the one he wouldn't have wanted. I think, personally, it'd be the ideal start. There, there is no getting away playing against Rangers and Celtic. The players will be up for it. Uh, the supporters will be up for it, so it is well playing against the best to start with and then take it from there and you get a, a level where you, you know you've got team for or how good the team actually is. Who are you supporting this afternoon, incidentally? I hope for a Hearts win today. <laughs> <laughs> I won't ask you, Trevor, because I know you're totally unbiased <laughs> in these things. Exactly. You said already, you think it's going to be an exciting game. I do think it's going to be a very good game today. Uh, as Dick Abaka said there, that it's always a tough game going to Tyne Castle. It's always a very close game. Um, First goal is going to be important. I think that's important for Craig as well. Well, we're all looking forward to it. You can see the teams are emerging. We'll hear more from Paul and from Trevor shortly. In the meantime, here we go. Hearts against Rangers live with Gordon Smith and Rob McLean. Thanks, Richard. Welcome to Tyne Castle and the Hearts team under the management of Craig Levine for the first time. Craig Levine, who 17 years ago to the day made his first playing appearance for Hearts now. He is the head coach with uh, Peter Houston alongside him. I'm not sure how permanent the arrangement is with Peter Houston. Maybe a bit of work to be done on that one yet. But let's have a look at the teams. Let's remind ourselves of those before we get underway. One change to the Hearts team which lost at Dunfermline in midweek. 20-year-old Robbie Nielsen in for Gary Locke. Locke's on the bench. There were slight doubts about Presley, Cameron and Kurt. They're all okay. Yeah, we're listening at the 4-2 four, four formation, but uh, we understand that Juan Joe is going to play on the left-hand side, which does seem strange, because Seven is not an out-and-out -out, uh, wide player on the other side, so I think they'll just tuck in a bit, and it might actually become a 4-3-3, but it's obviously tactical to play Juan Joe on the left today. So that's how the hearts are shaping up. Here is the Rangers selection, pretty much as expected. Michael Moles is rested with Tori Andrew Flo available to return. He was ineligible for the UEFA Cup tie in midweek. And a bit of continuity, Gordon, about this selection there for Dick Advocat. Yeah, it's a long familiar line. Certainly the back have tightened up with uh, Scott Wilson coming in and uh, going to a three there. Barry Ferguson will protect them and also make the play in front and try to support Flo and Miller up front. A very lethal partnership. And the referee is Stuart Dougal. from BBC Scotland, the second live match in four days, and it's a big one for Gordon Jury, who was seven seasons with the Rangers, and at least until the end of the season, 
is the hearts player. And Tori Andre Flo hoping that every Sunday brings him a goal. Certainly managed one last weekend in the old firm match. And now back in the side for his second appearance and starting up front alongside Kenny Miller. I wonder what sort of emotions are buzzing around inside Craig Levine at the moment. If you think to check earlier, he might have been at Montrose yesterday with his Cowden Beef side, but instead all his thoughts were channeled towards here and his first match as head coach of hearts. And the prospect for him couldn't be much tougher against a Rangers side who appear to be finding their feet. 5-1 winners a week ago against Celtic. Very impressive against Kansas Latin in midweek. Maybe not in terms of chance taking, but certainly in terms of quality of performance, particularly in the first half. Quite outstanding. And they'll hope to keep that going because they have a big job on their hands in the SPL. 16 points behind Celtic. Three games in hand, including this one. So potentially it could be back to seven points for them. They will hope that is the way as they try to close the gap, as they try to cling on to their title. Barry Ferguson in the midfield. He's been absolutely outstanding in the last couple of matches. And Scott Wilson in the side for his eighth game on the trot, having looked as if he was going to be shipped out by Dick Advocat. But he might yet have a future at Ibrox. Constant question mark surrounding Lorenzo Amoruso as he fires the ball in. It's blocked. And Hearts get it clear. Stephen Gloss, straight at Grant Murray, Wanjo on the left, as exclusively revealed by Gordon Smith. <laughs> Cameron to Jury, snapshot from Colin Cameron, already threatening, he's been great goal scoring form of late, and he's liable to try a shot from anywhere. Yes, first time Hearts have got forward and they've managed to create an opening, Gordon Jury just playing at the path. Colin Cameron's always a threat uh, from any sort of distance. He's had a good scoring form of late too, and they want to get forward as much as they can. But uh, Rangers a long spell of pressure there, and good possession of the ball and passing without actually creating anything. Amaruso scored one of the Rangers' five goals in the old firm match last weekend. And as Dick Abigail is already out to the dugout, he won't stay there for too long. It'll be Nielsen's throw down the line for Andy Kirk. Also a partnership uh, for Hearts like Rangers have an experienced striker alongside a youngster. And, uh, you know, Kirk and, and Jury also uh, will get the benefit of Jury's experience there to, to keep the youngster going. He's already an island international, but he hasn't played that many first-team games, Kirk, but very sharp striker. Tyne Castle is where it all started for Dick Advocat two and a half years ago. He took his Rangers side here for the first time and lost. But he hasn't looked back much since. And despite a dodgy spell of late, he has always remained confident this season. But once he got his players back after a horrendous spate of injuries, they would begin to play again. And it wasn't too late to begin to claw back Celtic's lead. Still sticking with that belief. There was a lot of work to be done. Newman's pass in field for Ronald de Boer. Scott Stevens with him. Amoruso. Hearts working hard at shutting Rangers down. Harry Ferguson. Finding himself a little bit of time. Kurt Conterman appears alongside. That's in for Miller. But it's well away from the target. And through it goes to a one-time Rangers keeper, Anthony Yemi. A Contiman, Gordon, who looked a little bit more impressive, I think, for Rangers during the week against Kaiser Slavin. Yeah, he played slightly further forward than he's playing uh, tonight, uh, this afternoon, I should say, because uh, Kaiser Slavin only took the one up front, and that allowed him to go and attack the next few days. He's under pressure there, as Andy Kirk threatens. From what I've seen of Andy Kirk this season, great potential. Looks as if he could be a very good striker. Just 21 and he's happy to mix it as you can see there and he knows the way to go good long throw from Nielsen 
this was header. Rangers with the second leg of that UEFA Cup tie against Kaiserslautern to come on Thursday. But they're, of course, at the moment very much in today because the SPL is now a big challenge for them. Foul given against Grant Murray. Yes, yeah, a bit late. He's just come around. He's actually played the ball, but uh, he's taking the legs away from Miller at the same time. And uh, I think it's a definite foul. Five minutes gone at Tank Castle, the BBC live match. And no goals. Cody Arena to take the free kick. Good precious little for Rangers this season. This is his ninth game. A lot of injury problems, and how Rangers have missed him. Very influential a week ago. Barry Ferguson's pass is to Perth for Arthur Newman's run. Thrown in for Miller. And turned away by Goran Petric in the six-yard box. Wonderful run by Arthur Newman. And look at the quality in this pass from Ferguson. Yeah, that's a measure of Ferguson of late. Uh, the ability to see that pass and then deliver it as well. Great vision. Kenny Miller couldn't get across the front of Petric. Now he made his run a little bit earlier there. But also a good run from Newman when just forcing the pressure. Rangers first corner kick, in from Ronald De Boer, Lorenzo Amoruso's header, got it down but headed it wide. Yeah, he got power on, it was a good uh, corner, he whipped into the near post and uh, well clear by half, but uh, Amoruso following it out probably would have been a bit better if he could just have headed it down towards goal, plenty of bodies in there but he's obviously going for goal himself. Hearts were struggling to deal with the large presence of Tori Andrew Float the near post there as the ball flew back towards Amoruso. Steve Fulton for Hart going Cameron sprinting towards the edge of the box. Here he is. Albert's with him. And now taking the touch of the Rangers midfielder. And in due course Hearts of their first corner kick. Yeah, you can see the good forward run that Colin Cameron's made there. He's got himself in that area between the, the centre backs and the wing back and it was good work by George Alberts because he tracked him and eventually just blocked it from the corner. Steve Fulton having a look at what's in the penalty box. Gordon Petrich right on the near post. Gordon Jury just in behind and Andy Kirk at the far post. In from Fulton. Headed away by Arthur Newman. Ferguson gets it away with Colin Cameron pressuring him. That's a burr. And now Wanjo. Good ball from Nielsen for Kirk, 20-year-old to a 21-year-old. And Nielsen is the owner of a pretty long throw. Not this time, though. He's the third me. Driven in by Nielsen. That's Ferguson crouching to get the ball under control. Stephen Presley tries to control his header for Cameron. Interception by Ring. Alberts. The pace of Miller. Well, he get there one time, but he couldn't get the ball under control. Grant Murray. Chase for Honjo. Good solid defending from Scott Wilson. Feels he's got a point to prove to Dick Advocat. And recently, he's been making his point. Kirk, off compliment, Kirk hoping for a corner, but it's a throw in, Kirk's an option and Jury, Gordon Jury comes to meet Murray, laid off by Nielsen for Presley, good defending from Presley, he's under a fair bit of pressure there, coming to Fulton, Away from Ferguson, beyond Albert, and he's been challenged by Amoruso. The whistle had already gone for a free kick. There's been a good confident start by Hearts, knocked the ball out well there under pressure. Stevie Fulton does really well here to flick it away, but gets caught by George Albert's tackle just on his shin, a uh, definite foul, and then gives him a chance of a shot. Looks like Petrich uh, is over the ball, Fulton, and then this ball becomes his injury. We're not going to go, but I think Patrick's will have a shot in here. 
Yes, it's Petrich. Straight out the wall. Hart's still an opportunity here, though. Robbie Nielsen put it in towards the head of Petrich. Head of everybody winning. Steve Wilson's pass. Don Jury steps over it brilliantly. It's one goal blocked by Wilson. Good defending. Lovely play from Jury. Reina sweeps it from right to left. Newman to De Burke. And back with the skipper, Barry Ferguson. It's another top quality pass after Newman. Didn't quite get the touch he was looking for. Now Albert. Newman again, sprinting on the outside. And his cutback deflected off the head of Presley and into the hands of Niemi. A little one through there, but look at this lovely dummy. Well, it's a chance for Rangers. I thought we were going to see the one for half there a minute ago, but the uh, ball there uh, just cleared the team players to get ahead there. But it was lovely play before uh, from Jury when he dummy didn't let Juan go through to have a attack it goal, and it was a good block. Albert and Amoruso on the left side of the back three. Lovely pass for Barry Ferguson. And is it a penalty? Yes, it is. Wonderful pass from Amoruso. Brilliant run from Ferguson. Danny went under the challenge from Gordon Petrich. Penalty kick. Yeah, it was very tight. Difficult to see from that angle. I think Barry Ferguson gets the touch. This gets tackled in as he goes through. Obviously makes the most of it when you get uh, touched in the box like that, but uh, he's definitely got the first touch to it. Gordon Petrich made contact with, contact with the player, but he's not happy about it at all. Difficult to tell from that angle how much contact there was. But any opinions on that don't really matter. Stuart Dougal gave a penalty kick. Here's George Albert. No doubt about it. Rangers one up. 12 minutes gone and Albert who struck the late winner against Kaiserslautern in midweek scores again ninth of the season Rangers are ahead yeah he's blasted that hasn't it uh, George Albert does miss one or two but uh, he wasn't going to miss with that one fatal goal but Barry Ferguson uh, that's, the, that's the view I think the referee gets of it I think that uh, Barry Ferguson just gets touched he's probably not going to catch it goes down but he's definitely uh, some reasonable contact but we don't know how much but there's no doubt about it that uh, if you're a defender there you can't afford to make a challenge if you're just that fraction of a second late as Gordon Petrich was there then there's a chance of giving away a penalty he obviously felt Gordon Barry Ferguson was about to pull the trigger and he had to make some sort of effort of getting in the way of it um, really difficult to quantify how much contact there was there Barry Ferguson certainly crashed down and as he was falling he was screaming toward Referee Stuart Dougal for a penalty kick. Um, the referee immediately pointed to the spot and uh, George Alberts did the rest. Anti Niemi without a hope of keeping it out. And it's driven into the corner. And the goals keep coming for Alberts. There was one new Rangers in mid-September, Ibrox in the corresponding fixture. And they lead 1-0 at Pine Castle. And we played 14 minutes of the first half. Stephen Presley's free kick. Amoruso running that aerial tussle with Gordon Petrich. Ferguson on the move again. Fouled by Cameron. Rangers cut and didn't like it. Yeah, he's not too popular with the heart supporters just now. Ferguson uh, after the penalty, but. Uh, you know, they don't want to see any retribution from the Hearts players because they'll just get themselves into trouble. The two captains involved there, Cameron the Hearts and Ferguson Rangers. But uh, it was a great run, you have to say, for the penalty kick. Well, it great done. pass as well, wasn't it? It was that. Yeah, unusual to find Barry Ferguson running beyond the strikers like that. But uh, marvellous effort and uh, he got his reward for the penalty. So obviously that penalty award still a subject for debate. Among the supporters around the ground, the heart supporters, that is, Rangers fans are quite happy with the decision to do their foot. Claudio Reyna. 
to survive from Tori Andre Flo. Now it's the burr. And Flo. Linking play together. Ferguson on his left foot. Way over the top this time. Let's have another look, though, at the pass, which released Barry Ferguson just prior to the penalty being awarded, Gordon. Yeah, it was a great ball over it. Just knocked right over the top into the space. Stephen Presley's knocked across there, and across comes Ketrich. Just makes contact on there. I think there is definite contact. And you say Barry Ferguson might be accused of playing for it, but uh, that doesn't matter if you're actually touched and, and uh, after you've played the ball. Ketrich, I say, took his chance on the timing of it and got it wrong. And what you certainly can say is that Rangers were rewarded for an excellent long pass and great surging run from Barry Ferguson. Keep it to Fury. To Fulton. Too long, the pass. And Hearts have to gather themselves after yeah. the disappointment of losing the opening goal. That's right. I mean, they, were, they were doing pretty well. I mean, it was a, an even match. Hearts were getting forward, facing some openings, passing the ball well. That's a serious blow for them, and uh, this is a test of character. How they come back from it, one of the hardest things to do, though, is uh, a lot of side like Rangers who are very good on the ball and, and can pass it and also can hit quickly on the break. Uh, you don't want to be throwing too many players forward uh, at this stage of the game and maybe lose another one. That's great skill from Tori Andre Flo. The reverse pass, though, runs away from Arthur Newman. Might have kept that a little bit simpler from our Chelsea striker, the £12 million pounds man, but it was a lovely little touch which got him into some room. And talking of new boys, Craig Levine, less than happy with the scoreline at the moment. They'll be relatively encouraged, I think, Ian Peter Houston, with the way that Hearts have started the match, but one down and, and Rangers looking good. Yeah, I think he'll be pleased with his team so far, certainly in terms of the effort, the work rate. The organisation's been good as well, and uh, I said they've, they've, they've good spells in the match, but uh, it may not be too happy with the fact that they caught out with one long pass like that, uh, straight from the back, and Barry Ferguson getting beyond his central defence. And that's very much the sort of pass that, as a player himself, Gordon, he would have wanted to cut out. Very popular player at Tynecastle in his time, Craig Levine, and a lot of people are happy to see him back. The big concern, of course, is to, is to whether he's experienced enough to take on this position at age 36. Free kick for Rangers. And it's no great surprise to see uh, the captain placing the ball very carefully for a strike at goal. It's only about the 50 yards out. Former captain. Maybe that's why he lost the armband. Body Arena. 1-2 with Ronald DeBoer. Good effort from Reina. Simple stuff, but very effective. Yeah, Reina's also been uh, very powerful since he came back in the team there. This is where his, uh, his midfield play comes into being there. He gets, gets on the end of that. Ronald DeBoer just flips it to him. It's a good drive. I think Miami's always got it covered really straight at him. Gordon Jury haven't seen too much of him so far as an attacking force. A clever player, an experienced player, and important to heart. Grant Murray, he's put the stumble, but that's good play to get away from Albert. And a lovely pass to wide for Juanjo. Juanjo's cross, headed away by De Boer. Albert, good play. Reina to Ferguson. Not to get his heels is Colin Cameron. The two skippers seeing a lot of each other. Nineteen minutes played. BBC Scotland bringing new hearts against Rangers. As we've just joined us, Rangers one up. Goes out back to score from the penalty spot. De Boer gets it back from Miller. That was intended for flow. Takes it for it clear, not too convincingly. And Rangers again heading their way. De Boer, good control on his talent. Now Ferguson. Reiner supplies the wood. 
Albert on the left peg, shooting up for a shot. Instead, it's for Flo. Now Albert, blocked by Presley. And finally, Newson gets it out of the danger area. And that's a heavy looking challenge on Andy Kirk by Brett Conter. Yeah, he's still looking away with that. It's uh, fairly physical there, a bit of a barge into Kirk. And that looks like Stuttgart was about to produce his yellow card and then change his mind. Andy Kirk felt that. Nielsen up for jury. Using his strength to hold off Conterman. Amoruso clears. Hot stands. Reckoned that was a foul by Ferguson and Fulton. Not given. Not popular in these parts, is he, Barry Ferguson? So that will be a booking, I think, for Grant and Murray. Still do by explaining that he didn't get the ball, he went straight through the man. Yeah, it's a tackle from behind him, so he slid into his feet, he comes through it, he probably does get a slice of ball there, but it's still a bit of a reckless challenge from behind, it's a type of tackle they've been trying to cut out the game for years, and, uh, you know, Grant Murray got away with one already, and I think the referees just decided that, uh, we have to stop that, but uh, I mean, you can't really get into that sort of challenge in the modern game. Chris Robinson will be pleased that it's Barry Ferguson that's getting the brewing at the moment. Scott Wilson to throw your lead. Long Joe's going to keep him at bay. Amaruso to Newman. Rangers looking very much in control at the moment. Good play from Kenny Miller. Did well to get off the ground and get that control in his chest. Finally, the Rangers passing movement ends. from Jury to Nielsen. Let's say half the three well organised, Rob, because even though Rangers had uh, some good possession midfield, knocked it about well, moved them about, there still weren't many openings here, there weren't any really through, through passes that they could just uh, knock the ball in behind them again. So the organisation, apart from the actual penalty it was given, has been fairly good from that. Compton touch. And uh, Compton again. Sliding in was Jury. Yeah, and Kenny Miller will cut this. Tori Andrews will in the middle. One of the door getting there. Stephen Presley well placed to clear. Rayner switches it. Arthur Newman. His pass coming back off Cameron to Albert. Newman again. Kenny Miller taking it first time. That's a sign of a player who is on a good run of goal scoring when you try to strike it first time on the turn from the edge of the box. But uh, his recent record, Gordon, has been absolutely fantastic. Kenny Miller, nine goals in Rangers' last ten games. Yeah, normally uh, you would, what you expect to hit the target with that, but uh, I just think it's maybe a busy afternoon for Hearts fans that when they do Barry Ferguson every time he gets the ball because he's, uh, he's very industrious, he gets on the ball an awful lot. Away by Amaruso, but only as far as Jury. And that's a foul. Late on Kirk. And Steve Fulton will head across to take this. Stephen Presley gets forward, Goran Petric is getting there as well. Alongside Severin and Jury and Kirk. Andrew just outside the box. In from Steve Fulton. Pushed away by Stefan Cross. He wouldn't come down there for Colin Cameron. He didn't fancy the challenge from Barry Ferguson. No free kick given. Good play from Cameron for Hearts. 
won it well. Gordon Judy's cross, headed away by Amaruso. Here comes Rory Nielsen. So that's good backtracking from Ron the Burr, and the whistle had gone anyway. Doing his fair share of grafts there, Ronald de Boer. I think he's been viewed a little, as a little bit of a luxury by the Rangers supporters since arriving from Barcelona, but he feels he's not yet been 100% fit or really anywhere near it. And the Rangers fans are still to see the best of the door. Money's headed away. Fulton. This time the free kick is given against Sonny Ferguson, and that's probably from the Hearts fans about the biggest cheat of the afternoon. Yeah, I think they enjoyed that, but uh, there's not much in it really. The normal challenge, and I wouldn't even have thought it was a foul. See Fulton on the ball again. Captain Martin. Little lap. And now has to backtrack and try and match Kenny Miller for pace. He's your second guy. So we're going against the Rangers striker. Yeah, I think he's just tugged just caught uh, a couple of times there on the, on the initial run. Not that when he actually won the ball in the end up, but just before that. Judy the target. And a little by Wilson. One jewel fouled by Ferguson. Two fouls in quick succession by the Rangers skipper. I think the referee's corned a bit there. I think they've seen that as a little nudge and bite, but uh, in the end up with Stone and Self down and uh, got the free kick. Steve Fulton's free kick. Presley's after it. Got Ronald the Burr in possession. Checked off without the ball there. Scott Devlin. Driven cross. And Gordon Judy! Brilliant save by Stefan Cross. Gordon Judy thought he'd the equaliser here. Yeah, they've always driven in by Scott Devlin. A little flick off the head of Barry Ferguson. And Gordon Judy did really well to power ahead of and control it. Keep it down, hard and low. And he's going in the bottom corner there with Marvel State from Cross. Judy had a long look at that ball, well, as long as you can in the penalty box before steering his header at the far post. And he thought that was in. Corner kick from Fulton. Touched away, but only as far as Scott Severin. Got blocked by Wilson. And Judy's effort is amazingly saved by Cross. A good couple of minutes for her, but foiled here. Yeah, it just didn't fall from there. Seven Cross got the original punch out. You see here it comes. Scott Severin, the first shot. Blocked, came and uh, probably put it anywhere else he might have scored, but it was uh, a bit near the middle of the goals. Cross got down well. This is great goalkeeping from Stefan Cross. He must have seen this incredibly late from Gordon Jury. And fantastic reflexes to stretch out his left hand and make the save. And two important interventions there in just over a minute from Stefan Cross. He's been idle for most of the match, but he now has played a big part in keeping out Gordon Jury twice. First the header, then the left foot shot. Ronald de Boer. George Albert slowing things down. Well, that's been an action packed few minutes. And the clock has kicked on towards 29 minutes gone. Albert pass flicked on by De Boer and Newman. Turn back from the byline for Kenny Miller. Well, in Miller's book, that's a half chance. Wasn't picked up. He found himself a good bit of room here, Gordon. He did. It wasn't a good finish, so but, uh, this is the save, I think, coming up from Claus here. Just, oh, look at that. Great reflexes getting down there and saving that. But, uh, from Rangers' point of view, that was a, a real chance there. Kenny Miller has come off the line and come out and got himself a bit of space. Newman's found him, but he's, he hasn't been able to turn it in. 
foul given against Gordon Judy as he won that header. So the Andrew Paul. Deceptively quick and able to change direction very readily as well for a big lad as Flo on a free kick there. One of the door, chips it in. Robbie Nielsen heads it away. Hearts really want to get the ball down and start playing some passes, but they're giving it away too easily for their own good at the moment. Stephen Presley's clearance. Isis Lake. The live football continues on BBC Scotland. This is the next one, and it couldn't be much bigger. February the 11th, 1 o'clock kickoff on a Sunday. The old farm match. Here's Barry Ferguson. Sorry, Andre Flo. That's well played by Nielsen. For a 20-year-old, this is a steep learning curve. That's well played by Jury. And gets it back from Colin Cameron. Hearts need a little bit more of this. From Fulton. Jeff is always used to reckon when Fulton played well, Hearts played well. Andy Kurtz made a good one. Takes Dirk Conterman with him. A throw in there, and that's the outcome there on the far side. This might well be the long throw this time from Robbie Nielsen. Into the head of Gordon Petrich. Won it well. There's Andy Kirk. So the decision goes against Hearts. Yeah, I think, he, I think he's come from an offside position there as he came out there. But uh, Nielsen's throw in certainly is very strong. I mean, he can throw a ball right into almost past the penalty spot, which is uh, you know, a real weapon at times if you get the right players in the team uh, to attack it. Petrich obviously is that man. Robbie Nielsen has nine top team starts this afternoon for Hearts. Hearts will feel a lot better about the match having had those two efforts on goal in quick succession. It's a foul. Nielsen on Newman. some tender words of advice from Stuart Dougal. Yeah, I'd say a bit clumsy. Some in there, there's no way that uh, Arthur Newman can go really can see that guy. Oh, he did fancy that one, did he? I think so, he saw that uh, private policing there from Dick Abacab. But you have to say that, uh, you know, there's no way they can go. It's probably been better just going and holding Arthur Newman there than the corner. Scott Wilson. Played first time by Josh Albert. I think he was aware that Colin Cameron was about to be nipping at his ankles again. Played back by Judy. A return pass from Nielsen. Good play from Judy. His shot firing off Colin Cameron. Possession back to Hearts. Scott Severn. Very promising player. Then again, but didn't really fancy the pass at that stage because we're into Amaru, so we tight in behind him. Fulton sitting through the challenges while well, most of them. And a free kick in just the sort of area from which Fulton himself can slice it into the penalty box. It's a great decision by Stuart Dougal, but uh, I think that could be much better for Hart if uh, he took the advantage there because Stuart Dougal managed to push the ball away to one of his own teammates and Scott Seven was free on the right hand side. 
Presley and Petrich waiting. In from Poulton. In and away by Flo. Presley's after it. Ten minutes left in the first half. Hearts doing their best to get back on level terms. And it's another one for man Gordon Jury. Maybe not this time though. Good turn by Juan Joe. Fueled by Amaruso. And touched away by Ferguson. Long ball from Niemi. That was Gordon Jury. And Andy Kerr. Hart denied again. And again it's Stefan Foss. Right place, right time. Otherwise, it was 1-1. Tremendous play again from Jury. He's having quite a half. But here come Rangers now with Miller. Good defending from Robbie Nielsen. Well, Andy Kirk. was going to be a goal. Yeah, Andy Kirk still can't believe it, Gordon. Yeah, he's come in there. Nobody's tracked his run. Look at that. He's got a free shot at goal. And there's brilliant Saber Kloss to come out and block that. There he's said. Uh, Taking the pressure off his defenders there and got them out of jail because they really should have tracked the run of Andy Kirk after Jury had headed the ball on. Stephen Presley in the unaccustomed position of left winger. That's good play from Barry Ferguson. He was aggressive. He won the ball fairly. And Juan Joe not happy with the decision. And he may well be advised to keep his thoughts to himself because that's the yellow card for descent. And that might count against him later on. Here's what he's getting all excited about. Yeah. Nothing in it really. I mean, there's no point in one just complaining about that really. I mean, there's nothing in it at all. Just he's just nice enough for possession of it. Maybe just caught him because Barry Ferguson was past him, had the ball. But uh, he's well just letting that go. He's got himself in trouble. Yellow cards, as you say, Rob. That could prove costly later on. Came off the head of Petrich, away by Presley. Cameron to Jury. Nielsen. It's given away. Albert's finding flow, but as flow hit the deck, Murray came away with the ball. They haven't kept it for long, though. Arthur Newman, lovely touch from Tori Andre Flo to get that immediately under control. Onto it is Newman. On his right foot, Arthur Newman. And it was a good strike. Anthony Yemi well positioned to make the save. They have great support play because you can see there Flo is holding up. He's looking for somebody to just to come and go past them. And Newman's a man and he takes off his right foot. There are other options, but uh, they say he tries to shot himself. Not the best, you have to say straight at Yemi. Another long throw opportunity for Robbie Nielsen. Looking for Scott Severin's head, but it was Amon Russo there first. And Nielsen again. Gordon Jury with the snapshot. Scott Wilson in the way from Sundine. It's a corner kick. And an opportunity for Hart to keep the pressure on. He's having an impressive half, isn't he, Gordon? Gordon Jury. I think Gordon Jury's done really well. I mean, not only laying on uh, passes for the people, holding it up well. He's had a couple of efforts too. That one there was goal bound, and the one that uh, Claus saved on the line as well. Quite easy to have it a goal. The left foot in the swinging corner kick from Steve Fulton. Goran Petrich. And turned away by Ronald de Burke. Nielsen. Grant Murray, left back, not his natural position, but having a slot in there seems to fail to carry Naismith to Everton. Fulton from Nielsen. Promising moments for Hart. Out comes Stefan Claus, punches it away. 
Three hot squares are holding in for the header. And Green is just sitting in far too deep. Well, I mean, has to pick the ball up and run forward with it and uh, unchallenge the defending far too far back. And I think the camera's kind of probably trying to show that's what it has been. Hunterman's header away. It's picked up by Colin Cameron. Early ball into the box. Stefan Klaus, who's produced three top-class saves in the first half to keep Rangers ahead. And the scoreline stays this way. Hearts won't be happy about that, but they will be pretty encouraged by the way they play at times. Good defending from Severa, tracking back with Albert. Colin Cameron loses possession. And he's helped out by his midfield buddy, Severa. Perhaps midfielder worked well together. I mean, it's, it's the Rangers midfield are difficult to play against the quality of the passing Albert and Ferguson, the view of the movement. But the uh, hearts have more than matched them in that area. Cameron, Fulton, Severin have all been very prominent. It's been a real good contest in the midfield. for too long. It's taken by Petrovic. Foul given against Sir Andre Flow. Signs of relief all round in the heart's defence. After an unforced error from Petrovic. Cameron to one throw. Skipping inside Reina. Oh, well, it's worth a goal for one, though. We've seen him scoring from that sort of range before. That time, though, he didn't get over the shot. And oh, he ended up way over the top. Yeah, that's just right. He's given to the further ring on his left-hand side, and that gives him the space. And he's just trying to curl that into a far corner. And uh, as often as not, uh, you can't make a bit of a mess of it. That's exactly what happened there, but it's the right idea. I'm sure he's featured in your goal of the, goal of the month for nations before, hasn't he? Yeah, has, but uh, not that often, though, that he's been there. Not that time for one joke. But that's back on the ball with Gordon Jury. Giving Lorenzo Amoruso a run for his money there. Amoruso knows all about his former teammate. And he's putting him under a fair bit of pressure at times. Presley got the header against Flo. Severin's challenge on Newman. Two minutes left of the first half. Rangers one up. George Albert with penalty. After Barry Ferguson had judged to have been fouled in the box by Gordon Petrich. A lovely touch from Kenny Miller. Claudio Reyna. Painting outside, then going inside. Driven in with the outside of his right boot. Headed away by Cameron. Now Barry Ferguson. Controlling the play. In the middle, Alberts with a one two. That's a good challenge by Cameron with a vital. Arthur Newman again. De Boer against Bobby Nielsen. Gets to the byline and it's just beyond flow. Good play from De Boer to get away from this marker. Just a little bit too much on the cross. Flo again and Reina. I said Hearts will be quite happy with their performance, but Rangers will be happy with the scoreline. And that's obviously the all-important one. And Russo for Newman. And not much choice for Robbie Nielsen other than to head the ball behind and give Rangers a corner kick inside the last minute of the half. No, that's well de defended by Robbie Nielsen there. He's had to track the run. A good ball again from Amoruso, a bit of backspin on it. You know that Newman can go on the end of it, and uh, Robin Nielsen's done the right thing just in the ordinary way. There's a busy penalty box. 
And aiming into it, Ronald De Boer. It is clear at near post by Gordon Jury. He played exactly 45 minutes. And this Rangers free kick might well be the last action of the half. Hearts will want to stay tight and stay organised for this. In from Ronald de Boer. Amadou Sos climbing at the far post. That's outside of Anton Castle. And Rangers one goal ahead. George Albert scoring from the penalty spot after a Petrich, a judge to have fouled Barry Ferguson as he surged forward on the end of Lorenzo Amoruso's long ball. The Rangers equally indebted to another German, Stefan Kloss, with three outstanding first half saves, which keep them in front. Here's the penalty, the long ball from Amoruso, great run from Barry Ferguson, a surging run from the midfield. And Gordon Petrich looked astounded that the penalty was given against him, but it did look to be contact there. Down went Ferguson, penalty kick, and you don't really expect him to miss. He doesn't miss too often. That his ninth goal of the season. And this was Stefan Kloss in action as Hart tried to get back on level terms. That effort blocked by Wilson, and an outstanding save, that one, from Stefan Kloss. Pure instinct on the goal line to stretch out his left hand and deny Gordon Jury. Gordon Rangers one up at the interval. Yeah, and there's an even better save, I think, later on uh, when he came out and blocked uh, Kirk when he was through after Jury's flick on. So Hearts are right in this game. Nothing much between the sides at all. The good football at times. Hearts are well organised. I'm sure Craig Levine will be delighted with this team, the performance they put in. They might argue about the penalty, they might debate that one, but all in all, it's, uh, it's still very tight and it's quite open for the second half. Another goal could uh, decide just exactly where this game goes. Rangers score again. And you think it would be all over for Hearts to try and come back and get three goals. But at the moment, as I say, they must be quite, uh, I'm sure they're quite confident themselves they can get back in this game. Only one goal in it at Tynecastle. Join us for the second half. At half time, it's Hearts nil, Rangers 1. That second half to come, and we'll also show you the best of the action from yesterday's SPL games at Spitaudry and at Dens Park. And we'll be looking back on the first half. There's a time castle. Paul Ritchie, what have you made of the opening 45 minutes? I think it's been a great game. Uh, I think Hearts will be a, a bit aggrieved going in 1 0 down. Played particularly well. Uh, I think the midfield three of Cameron, Fulton, and Seven have hard matched uh, De Boer and Ferguson in there. And I think they'll be unlucky. Had a couple of great chances, a couple of world class saves from Stefan Kloss, and they'll be un they're unlucky to go in 1 0 down. I suppose that midfield area, Trevor, mm. was always going to be very important. The Paul said, Hearts have battled very well, haven't they? They have. They've got numbers in there. I think that was part of the uh, team selection today from, from Craig Levine. Make sure there's enough bodies in there, because that is one of the strengths of Rangers. And if uh, you allow Rangers to get on top in there, you're not going to get yourselves into the game. Uh, the only difference between the sides for me is the penalty. Uh, to be honest, the clear chances have come Hearts' way. And thanks to Stefan Close, as far as Rangers are concerned, uh, they've kept them in it. Well, let's have a look at the, the penalty incident. Um, the Hearts fans clearly didn't fancy this mm. decision very much. Did, any doubts in your mind? Uh, not at all. Uh, it's, um, it was a good ball from Amaroos, it has to be said, but you wouldn't like to think that your defence is going to get caught off a ball like that. Great run from Barry Ferguson. And Gordon Petras really just made the wrong decision there. Uh, Barry was always going to try and stretch to get the toe to that. And Gordon's just been a little bit lazy about it for me. Made a decision just to get his toe there before it, but it's always, always liable to make an error. And his error was made, and uh, as you saw, the penalty was given. Paul, any doubts in your mind? No doubts whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, it's a great ball for Amoruso, uh, and Barry Ferguson's made a great run. And it, it's, it's pure defending from Gordon. Yeah, he was unlucky here, was he? He was. I think you look at the power of George Alberts, and I think he, he did get a slight hand to it, but it, I think it was always going in the back of the net. I mean, even getting fingers for that, Trevor, you're yeah. never going to stop that sort of power, are you? No, if you see that uh, just before Albert struck the ball, Niemi was actually edging towards that uh, corner. He was encouraging to hit it the other way, enticing the double bluff, if you like. And uh, But when Alberts connects like that, it's difficult to get uh, a hand to it, and Niemi almost saved it. So uh, what about the, the moves that led to? We saw it there, incredible to think, um, you, you mm. spend all this money and you come out with tactics and you get coaching, and basically it's a long thumb down the uh, bar that opens up yeah. the defence. Well, it's a variety of spice of life, isn't it, you know? <laughs> um, just a, a thump up field. It was a, a nicely driven ball, and it wasn't going to run through to the goalkeeper, so I'll give Amoruso credit for that. 
uh, as uh, Paul said, give uh, credit also to Barry Ferguson for making that run, which was uh, a great one. But I think the decision defensively by Gordon Pitchers was wrong. I said just a word about Ferguson. We're seeing that more and more, it strikes me, even in mm -hmm. the last few games and getting into these advanced Absolutely, positions. Absolutely, yeah. I think if you look at his performances in the previous couple of years, you would have to say that he's always kept himself behind the ball and be encouraged to do so. And it's starting to change now. He's getting more and more confidence. I think the players <coughs> around him as well are encouraging him to do that. Dick Advertise is obviously saying to him as well, you give us uh, a goal threat if you can as well. And he's, he's taken that on board. As Trevor was saying, Paul, that Rangers perhaps haven't created too many chances. There was the opportunity um, for Clevy Arena, um, who seems to add a fair bit on the, the right-hand side of the field for Rangers. He does, and I think Rangers have missed Claudio uh, at certain spells this season. And it just shows you here, um, he's run down the right-hand side. He's got a great engine to get up and down, and he, he's cut inside Wanjo uh, on his weaker side. But he, he gets a 1-2, and he, he still has a, a great shot, uh, just inches over the bar. Do you think he has significantly improved Rangers in that position, Trevor? I do like him in that position, I have to say. I think it, uh, Rangers look a better team for me all round when he's on the ball, because he's, he's one of these guys who doesn't give the ball away. Uh, and that's, that's a great asset in any team and any player. And uh, he's an international player, and you yeah. can tell that he uses confidence. Hearts then, uh, they, they went through, it was a, a foolish mm. spell, I suppose, but then they really did begin to create chances, That's and right. um, Gordon Dewey has <laughs> a golden five-minute spell. Absolutely. Well, you feared for Hearts a little bit uh, after that first goal, because you thought, they just get another goal, and it uh, could be curtains early on. But uh, Craig Levine will be delighted that his team rallied uh, and put pressure on, uh, on Rangers. Rangers started to defend uh, really deeply, and Gordon Smith pointed that out. So uh, it was definitely one of those situations where Gordon, uh, Gordon Jury gets into these positions very, very well, connects wonderfully well with the header. And uh, after, for a second, I thought Stefan Kloss was beaten. I think that is the quality of uh, Stefan. He can get down to these saves, make, he, he is a good uh, shot stopper. And uh, this one was particularly uh, a great effort. I think Paul, the, the Hearts fans must have been out their feet. They must have thought that was him. They must have. Uh, it's a great ball from Severin. Uh, and it's a great header for the jukebox. Yeah, great save. This is the corner, um, almost immediately, in fact it was immediately, wasn't it, from the, the save there. Again, keep it as well here. Oh, it's a great save. First shot from Severin is uh, well blocked by Scott Wilson. Uh, it drops to Gordon Jury, and it's a great save. Uh, instinctive, strong this, and they say he's a world-class goalkeeper who has helped Rangers out over the, the past couple of seasons. Uh, is it all about is it concentration? Is it all about technique, Trevor? Just you saw actually both sides of yeah. Stefan Kloss there, you saw him coming floundering yeah. around for, for the corner, which was a good ball in, but it, it wasn't particularly difficult, and he did make good contact. But then, uh, you know, when he's down there, he's really, really good making saves, and the strength of wrist, you know, he's mm. got down there, made sure that um, the ball doesn't cross the line. If Arthur Newman had got a little touch on that, it would have been in the back of the net, so Rangers very, very lucky to get away with that. And he was involved again, um, Gordon Jury mm. creator this time, and yeah. again, Stefan Kloss to the rescue pass. Yeah, yeah, Gordon Jury's done very, very well. He adds that bit of a, a spearhead to the team and a bit of uh, experience that's required. Gets in good positions, and I think uh, young Andy Kirk is benefiting from having Gordon Jury there, and uh, he's feeding off a bit like Kenny Miller's trying to feed off to Andrew Flo. It's the same thing happening for, uh, for Hart as well. The experience of Jury, will that be beneficial to the, the likes of the, the young strikers that we see coming through at Hearts, Paul? Definitely. Gordon's played at the highest level, both club level and international level. And with the young strikers that Hearts have got at the moment, and Andy Kirk and Wanjo, uh, they will benefit from uh, Gordon's experience. I suppose the problem for Hearts, as things stand, is that they haven't been able to make the, the best of, of these opportunities that, that we've seen. That's right. I think you're always on a level par with Rangers, you've got a chance to, to beat them. Once you go a goal down, a test of character, uh, and to be fair, Hearts have, have rallied well. This is the uh, Andy Kirk incident. I mean, again, Gordon Jury involved there, but um, would you have expected him to score? Well, he's, I think uh, you know, has done everything right there. I think Gordon Jury, full credit to him for uh, for making contact there. Uh, he's got the better of Scott Wilson. And you see here, Andy Kirk keeps his eye on the ball. Yeah. He's it'd be very easy for him to get a half a sight of the goalkeeper coming out, but he did well. Kept his eye on it. Another great save by Stefan Kloss. And, and again, there in terms of the goalkeeper, it's a case of just getting your body in the way and hoping to, to block it. That's it. Uh, get out, get out there quickly, be committed, and be positive. And to be fair, Andy Coat was positive as well, yeah. but Kloss made the save that was necessary. Overall, Paul, how do you think um, Craig Levine will be feeling after his first 45 minutes? I think he'll be disappointed with the score, obviously. But I think he'll be encouraged by the way Hearts did come back from going to uh, going to go down. And as I said, the way if they keep playing away in the, the second half, they can sneak a, a equaliser. Maybe even sneak the, the victory. 
second half to come, of course, let's just look back on uh, the matches we had last night on Sports Scene Match of the Day, the games between Aberdeen and Kilmarnock, and first of all, Dundee and St Johnston. <laughs> Seventh goal of the season, but that's his first in two and a half months since his hat trick in the Dundee Derby. Great ball in from Ivano Bonetti, and well up was Argentinian Sara. So we are making a late entry to the penalty box, played in by Paul Kane. As we are headed, and a good effort from Paddy Connolly, and a brilliant stop by Marco Rocati. Corner kick taken quickly. In from Bonetti! Brilliant save by Alan Lane. Sara onside. It's Peter Carranza a chance to steal the points for Dundee. Still has it. Off the post. And gathered by Alan Lane. Kane loses out to Bonetti. Here's a chance for Dundee to make things safe. It's Ivano Bonetti. Should have scored. Surely one chance for St. Johnston with Silla. Good ball in. And St. Johnston amazingly have equalised right at the death. It went off Lee Wilkie, and by the time Marco Rocati had scooped the ball back out, it had crossed the goal line. Ball forward for Dago, a good pass. Big Dago cutting it back. Gary Hayes stands in the ball, but he drops it to Andy McLaren. And come on up, take the lead. It looked for a second as though the chance was gone when Gary Hay stumbled in the ball. But he managed to get it through to Andy McLaren. And then pick it up. Dargo, lovely pass through towards Jimmy Fowler. And he strokes that one away. And Jimmy Fowler is enjoying that goal. Wonderful strike by the young substitute. Some forward movement. Anthony McJess, lovely flick into the path of Darren Young. Tries to control, gets a second chance. And slotted home by Arrow Stavrum. And the Kilmarnock defenders are furious. They felt Arrow Stavrum was in an offside position there. As that shot came across the face of the goal from Darren Young. But Stavrum threw it in the back of the net. Yet another away win for Kilmarnock in the highly entertaining draw between Dundee and St Johnston. Trevor, you seen much of Dundee? I've not seen that much of them, but what I do, what I have seen, I, I like. Uh, I was speaking to a friend of mine yesterday, uh, in fact last night, who went to the game yesterday. I said, it was a season ticket holder. I said, I'm going to get my season ticket sort of renewed for next year, because if they're going to play like that every week, you know, I want to be there. But it's exciting, it's exciting times, I think, at Dundee. Yeah, we're seeing it's almost beyond recognition, compared to the Dundee teams you've been used to playing against them. That's right, I mean, you're talking world-class players like Kenidia you're playing at Dens Park. <laughs> It's, it, things have turned around eh, very well for Dundee. They've spent a lot of money. They're getting seats back in into Dens Park and they're playing some attractive football. Sometimes too attractive, losing yeah. high-scoring games. But the punters want to see exciting football, lots of goals, and Dundee are producing that this season. Back to today's action. We had Craig Levine saying that the first thing he wants to do is to unify everyone at the club. He's also, of course, going to have to get the fans very much on board. Perhaps not him, but Chris Robinson. We'll see there. The latest protest by the fans, that uh, mobile billboard was driven around the city today and uh, in particular around Pine Castle. So perhaps still just a little bit of work to be done before everything is indeed unified, as Craig hopes. That's for the future. More immediately, of course, they have to get back on level terms, perhaps get ahead in uh, this live match here on BC One Scotland. Half time, Hearts Mill, Rangers One. It's back to Gordon and Rob. I take it, Richard, since you didn't mention it, you obviously didn't recognise that well-known landmark. 
Edward Castle, a stunning butt drop for this match. I thought that was Chris Robinson's house, or something. <laughs> I think that'll have to go in the cash cutbacks. But a man who remains under a bit of pressure, Chris Robinson. I think a lot of people still to be convinced that the club is going in the right direction. They've reported major losses. And he hopes that the appointment of Craig Levine as head coach will start to bring some positive noises around Tynecastle Way. Hearts were certainly positive in the first half and the way they responded to Rangers' opening goal. Always a big test of a team playing against the uh, reigning champions. When they go one down, things can get a lot worse for the Hearts. Give a pretty strong answer to what Rangers came up with. And as Paul and Trevor were saying in the studio, it was his heart who were carving out the better chances subsequently. Uh, but they'll need to put one away to get back on terms and then make Rangers really work. Offside. Harry Andre Flo prized away from Chelsea for the princely sum of 12 million pounds. Gordon Jury, again threatening aerially. That's too long from Gordon Petrich. And grabbed by the man of the first half in many ways, Stefan Kloss, feeling exactly why they have the cat as in the best but Kloss being the established number one. Other goalkeepers have come and gone at Ibrox, but Kloss is first choice. Cameron and Judy combined. And it's only for Ramadi so. A hand of friendship extended to Gordon Judy, but uh, a tad late here. Good experience from Gordon Judy. He just sucked him in, didn't he? You know, he showed him a bit of the ball enough for him to commit himself and it was either going to be away there from Amaris or be filled and uh, it was a lot Steve Fulton's free kick Presley was there Seven got ahead and of him he's got Seven in front of him, yep Yeah, he's a real threat at, at set piece Seven very good in the air, he's got a great leap and you see here that they try to pick him out Ian Presley come in, but you see the Seven's the one that gets up he gets his head to it, but uh, not on target Pretty useful at set pieces, Hearts, because we've got Presley and Petrich that push up from the back, and uh, Scott Severin in the air, Gordon's quite powerful as well. Yeah, he's tremendous, and uh, I think that you know, he has scored a couple of goals already, but uh, he gets on the end of one up a lot of these three kicks. News is that Gordon Petrich has been yellow carded as well in that first half, in addition to Grant Murray and Juan Joe, Petrich was also booked for his challenge with Barry Ferguson as a penalty was conceded so three yellows against hearts going into the second half here's a chance for the home team stumbled a little andy kirk and that allowed scott wilson to intercept don't know he gets it back from one to get a little bit more out of one drop in from Stevie Fulton away by Newman flow for others Stop Nielsen threatening against the bar Amoruso Alberts good first time passing Newman towards Miller and in with the challenge with Stephen Presley. Another former Rangers player, of course. Quite a few rounds. Newman throw to Wilson. Flo getting control of the ball under pressure from Murray. Ferguson for Newman. Back from De Boer. 
Just patiently passing the ball around, waiting for an opening, but they've lost it now. Scott Wilson robbed of possession, and in turn, Andy Kirk losing out to Bert Conterman. De Boer, change of pace, takes them away from seven. Back from Albert. Tony Andrew Flo on his left foot. Deflected. Corner kick. Yeah, a good bit of interpacking there from Rangers. They're mainly involving De Boer and Flo. And he just picked them out on the edge of the box. Took a little while. It was a bit under his feet as well, but uh, it did encourage the Hearts uh, challenge there. Two players come rushing in and just deflected over the bar. But uh, De Boer seems to have uh, drifted over a bit more to the left side. I'm just thinking that was a left winger in the second half. It's De Boer's corner kick. And it's headed behind by Grant Murray. Another corner kick to come. Murray has scored his first heart goal last weekend. Again whipped in by the bar. And three in a row. Another corner kick. Well jostling for position at the near post and it came off the gloves of Niemi. And again it's launched into the same area. Didn't go behind this time and Gordon Judy and to volley it clear. Andy Kirk sprinting onto the, the ball, supplied to him by Juan Joe. And it's there for a two from Kirk. He was well out from goal and he was at a fair old angle as well. But he's got good contact here as he surged onto the ball from midfield. Yeah, he's probably sized up the situation that's up on Newman. He's got a lot of pace. Kirk's pace. He decided not to run on, let it run on further or take him on. When he got the opening there, just decided to put in a left foot shot. And it was good power in it, just over the bar. Five goals for Hearts this season, Andy Kirk. And that effort off target, but certainly that effort he had in the first half. He was pretty sure he'd added to his tally there. But a lively player, and it's looking a promising combination with Jury. Nielsen's pass into the corner. Seven after it. But he had to get a few after Newman. Well, it's not like Central Park County Beat, is it? For Craig Levine. Changed days for a man who's been managing in the third division. Now he's up among the big boys. Could be relishing this, won't he? I mean, this is, uh, this is a great way to start your managing your career at the top level in a game like this, Rob. Amarusso's throw. Nielsen's header, controlled by Conterman, finds De Boer. The third Dutchman was Newman. And that's a foul and that's a cooking for Bert Conterman. Yellow card, late on jury. Yeah, it's a late challenge. I don't think he can have any complaints here. The ball just played in and uh, he's been right through. Gordon Jury there, caught him in the ankle. And uh, after this uh, heavy barge he had in the first half, I suppose a yellow card was coming. But uh, you see the half? Ron De Boer has drifted over uh, to the left-hand side. Just wonder about that deployment there, uh, why they're putting him in that position, because you think, well, if they're going to use somebody there, uh, we'd better get McCann on, who's naturally a left-sided player. I wonder if Dick's listening. Steve Fulton. Into the feet of Kirk. That's the break of the ball. Mistake by Scott Wilson. And he might well have been punished there by Andy Kirk. Charge towards the ball, Wilson, it's funnels of his boot, and that meant chance for Kirk. He was disappointed because watch this, he could have taken this ball on from here, but he's decided to have a flash shot. He could have pulled that down and uh, got onto his right foot, but he decided just to try the quick ball. He probably didn't realise he had as much time as he had because when you come in the box, you don't associate that with getting any time, and uh, in that occasion there, it just makes the wrong decision. The learning process continues for Andy Kirk. He'll certainly be helped by the presence of the experience Gordon Jury alongside him. Gordon Jury who is his 35th birthday next week and he wouldn't mind his present a little bit early. Certainly tried his best in the first half. Good play from Flo who win possession. Working all around the ground for Andre Flo. That's off the head of one joke. And 
Wonder again. Over the hand of Bert Conterman, nearly. Just got enough on it to divert the ball away from Kirk. Racing forward after Newman. Russo seeing the opportunity to get forward set up for Arthur Newman stretching out Stephen Presley to intercept the cutback fired away by Kirk for that skid speed of jury comes across Scott Wilson's pass heading out the one side chance for Rangers flow in the middle Tony Andrews low has missed a great chance to stretch Rangers' lead. And it wasn't an easy one to be fair. Definitely, uh, he's onside. You can see there the way that deep in this side has been played onside, and uh, Kenny Miller goes through on it a lot. Hearts fans are, are looking for offside, but he was definitely on. He's put a lovely ball across the box there, but it's not an easy one for Flo. You can see there, the enemy's come out. He's just trying to flick it over him, and he's put it past a real good chance for Rangers. A bit reminiscent of the chance he had early on in the old firm match last Sunday when Rob Douglas threw himself at his feet. Murray kept that in just. He's lost the ball. Ferguson to Newman. Alberts. Just can't go too much. It's really good. Where's the ball going? No! Albert's the flow. Plug up against him. Yeah, there's a definite change of system for Rangers. They've gone through the 4 3 3. There's no doubt that Ronald De Bruyne is playing just as a now and out left winger. Not really even check, checking back anymore. And uh, it means that Hearts should have a man over in the midfield area that they can uh, just get out of that. Uh, and then if there's a few hours to play and then they should be able to create something but so far it's still a fairly even game and you see Rangers are getting the ball to the boo as often as they can Grant Murray's cross Amaruso powerful header away Hearts want Colin Cameron to be influential in the second half they don't want him to give away possession like that one of the bar three against three for Rangers. Goal pushed out wide by Petrich. They don't like him anymore in the second half than they did in the first. Back tracking Gordon Jury as Zachary Newman got forward. Rangers skipper Ferguson again. And Contraman. Central figure in the range of back three. The door. Get a little touch. Has the that from Newman. Albert wants it in the middle. Here's Flo. Rangers controlling the play at the moment. That's 1 0 their lead. And that's always fragile. They want now Rangers is to make the point safe. The girl to Miller. Tony Andre Flo. Good challenge. She hesitated slightly, Flo, but a good challenge by Murray. One Joe to Kirk. But it's lost by Kirk. And Rangers would have been on the move again with the offside flag. Not been up against them. Andy Kirk will be relieved about this. Yeah, he must have put uh, something holding his arm down there because it's a very late flag, wasn't it? Definitely offside, but I thought at first he was going to allow play to continue there, but then uh, eventually the linesman put his flag up and uh, got it right. Dick, I think, congratulating the officials on their performance, or words to that effect. That's for Gordon Jury. Amoruso was above him to win the header. Albert's cross straight at Petrich. Steve Fulton. So Grant Murray quickly on to Juanjo. 
Turning inside out, that's coming into the top of the box. That's a booking. Another yellow card for Rangers, this time Albert. Yeah, once again, they can have no complaints. Nice little turn with Wanjo, and uh, George Albert's just caught his arm and spun him around, so normally these days that's a yellow card and gives Hearts an opportunity from the free kick. Left hand side, Wanjo, whether he'll shoot or he'll try and pick out some of the big men have got to join the attack. Yeah, Amaruso is up, and Pontiman there as well. Wanjo to take the free kick. Flipped in at the new post, and it was Scott Stefferon, who was the target, he got his head to it, but unable to hit the target, or in fact it might have been Andy Kirk, was it? Kirk and Petrich both went for it, it was Kirk who got his head to it, but no great joy for Hearts there, it's Petrich in defence this time, and Jury. Peeling away to find some room, one joke. But again, the ball is not good enough for Hearts. And now they try to build an attack again with Fulton. Kirk on the side. Early ball in, but it's really too early there because he didn't catch it. Contraman was in the way. And now it's Ranger is heading forward. Albert to the Burke. again so Google getting himself out of the way of it Ronald De Boer looking for a little glimmer of a chance find himself a shooting position but it was well off target pained expression <laughs> we saw sort of one Joe do the same in the first half and uh, we do know what can go wrong we see this a tiny little bounce of the ball there just before he hit it to put him right off but it's quite interesting, as I said, to see that the, the fact that put him there. I mean, Neil McCann came on Thursday night on that left side, and uh, I think it galvanised Rangers at that stage of the game with his pace and, and running power. And I just wonder why you know, the advertising station deployed the Brewers there if they're going to go off 4 3 3 and, and sacrifice that area of the midfield, whether that uh, McCann might not be more useful in that position. Flicked on by Jury, but Andy Kirk wasn't where he thought he was. Marusso back to Kloss. Flicked on by Alberts. And that's to no one in particular from Gordon Petrich. The pace of Miller causing problems for Petrich there. We're talking about Neil McCann, there he is behind Antti Niemi's goal, doing his stretching exercises, so it may well be that we're about to see Scotland International Mc McCann on the floor too much longer. I never think so, I mean, I don't know whether it was De Boer that would come off, because uh, it's having not a bad game, you have to say, but certainly if you're going to go 4-3-3 and you're going to play somebody as a natural left-sided player, then uh, McCann's the one, De Boer has a tendency all the time to come in on his right foot, as we saw there, and there's McCann with his pace and running power getting behind the half defence and that's exactly what the uh, Rangers would require in terms of getting the, the chances for the strikers. Eighteen minutes into the second half and still Rangers with a one goal lead. Courtesy of this man but anything else, Stefan Claus in his first half saves but also the penalty scored by George Alberts. Scored against Kaiser's Lightning on Thursday, that late winner at Ibrox. And the only goal so far here. Hook from Flo. Into it is Ferguson. It's the same combination has brought about the first half penalty. Ferguson and Petrich. Ferguson kept that in, but only for Grant Murray, who was unceremoniously knocked over by Claudio Reyna. And that's a third booking for Rangers. It's now three each. Claudio Reyna goes in the book. Yeah, I say once again, uh, there's nowhere really 
but uh, he can actually go for that money there, but I didn't think there was much in that at all. I, I think it was a bit harsh to make that booking, the actual challenge. Not really a six booking match, you would think, the way it's gone. No, I think it's been hard for, but uh, very fair. But when that little yellow card goes up on screen, you know he's been booked, so it's three apiece for the arena at the latest. Andy Kirk getting himself in a tight situation. And there's trouble ahead for Claudio Reyna. He's sent off two bookings inside a minute and Rangers down to ten men. I don't think he can complain. He could, might have complained about the first one. But this looks to be Gordon obstruction on Andy Kirk. Yeah, I think that's is a yellow card. There's no doubt about that. He's just blocked them, then I'm across them. I think that would have been uh, almost certainly. <laughs> And it's going, but I don't think so. But uh, that just shows you the merits of getting uh, one before. It's an uh, obstruction there and uh, definite. His arm was up as well, wasn't it? Uh, I'll say nothing as well. It's a daft foul to make when you've just received a yellow card within the minute. There's no point in committing a foul like that. You just let him go. You have to be sensible about it. And uh, in that respect, I don't think Claudio Arena can have any complaints, although he could complain about the first one. And Danny Ferguson apparently yellow carded as well in that little flurry. So a costly moment for Rangers. Here's the free kick from Juan Joe. Not a good one. His deliveries into the box really could have been a knock a lot better, Juan Joe. That one not really challenging at all for the Rangers defence to deal with. I'm not really sure whether you'll see Neil McCann on now. At this stage, well, maybe the uh, Rangers might look to another defensive player on. Here's Grant Murray. Well, having uh, had his first goal celebration for Hearts last weekend, it was almost number two in quick succession, but there was some reorganising for Dick Adekat to do. Now with Claudio Reyna off the pitch, making it clear where exactly he wants everyone to be deployed. And Gordon, if you're going to draw the list of players at Rangers who might be booked twice within a minute, Claudio Reyna would have been pretty well down your list, wouldn't he? Absolutely. I mean, I, I'm trying to get the guy... Uh, you think you have more credit than uh, to be booked again so quickly. I mean, you're just drawing attention to yourself. A daft foul to make the second one. The first one was an obvious, but the second one uh, certainly deserved a card. But uh, it's, it's so daft just to, to get it so quickly because the referees will be looking for something like that. But Rangers have gone to a four at the back. They're putting Quantum into the right-hand side. Wilson, Amorous are now the central defensive training. And it looks like they're going to four. A 4 3 2 formation. Ronald De Boer moved back into the midfield uh, to help out. We're still going with two up front, but definitely De Boer back in the midfield. Well, it gets more interesting by the minute. Rangers run up, but now it's 10 men against 11 for them. And Hearts will want to make that numerical superiority work for them and put some real pressure on Rangers. Again from Lanzo, fouled by Bert Quantuman. Now he's been booked already in the match. And he will have to beware. Yeah, he's got to put his hand up and say thanks, ref, there, because um, if, that's, uh, if that's not a yellow card, I don't know what it is. I mean, that should definitely be a yellow card. Lanzo might well be saving his best to last in this match. He is beginning to threaten. And Hearts have a free kick. I mean, if you've got a yellow card, well, it's too risky to try to attempt any sort of challenge like that. You've just got to stay on your feet and try and uh, read the game and intercept them. In from Steve Fulton. That was Tori Andrew Flo with the header away. Cameron to Neil Sonny, rushed it. Stephen Presley. Surprise, surprise, another yellow card. So building up a fair old collection here. I wonder who's not been booked. I don't think Steve Presley can believe that one. You know, I think that uh, he's had a turn there and he's just been held off. And not much in it, but I mean, I wouldn't have thought it was a yellow card uh, on the go there at all. 21 players on the pitch at the moment. It might be less by the time the full whistle, final whistle goes, the way things are progressing here. Fulton. Inside the play. 
The Rangers have got to retain their composure a bit here. I mean, Hearts are going to obviously put them under pressure. The Rangers have got to just get their organisation going and they've got to hold out. And uh, they've got to hold that maybe they can get a chance with the, the, the players they've got up front, but in the main, they've just got to be careful. Good round fired in for Kenny Miller, takes a deflection. That was a good challenge by Stephen Presley. Took the sting out of the shot and made it a comfortable save for Antignani. Good bit of defending from Presley as Rangers threatens. Now the match swings towards the other end. It's a bit like a cut tie here. And another free kick to Hearts. Given against the challenge of Arthur Newman. And a yellow card. I think I'll have to take on a secretary to deal with all these bookings. It's getting a hand a bit now, isn't it? I mean, they've got to be careful that the referee uh, almost is like the... He's, he's lost count, hasn't he? Look at him. He's just jumping into his hand now. Got to be careful to hold it. And now the red card is being shown. And one assumes that must be for dissent reaction to the de initial decision. Arthur Newman can't believe it. And it's all falling apart now for Rangers. Claudio Reyna off. And Arthur Newman follows him into the away dressing room. Rangers mm -hmm. down to nine. Did he already have a yellow card? I think I wonder if the referee just suddenly thought to himself, he's already got a, a yellow card after after having given the first because I didn't see anything to merit a second yellow card there. This is the afternoon for Stuart Dougal. And the two guy is called into action for Rangers. And Tori Andre Flo gives way as Rangers try to tighten up. And at this stage, it has to be holding on to what they've got, which is the order of the day. 11 against 9. Still Rangers lead. Steve Fulton's free kick. And almost a chance, but the whistle had gone. Yeah, Rangers will be happy to get out of this. Now with nine men in the points here today, because uh, certainly they will be put under tremendous pressure. And if the hearts, you're going to have to throw the ball cut just offside there. As that ball was knocked in, touched on there, but uh, they're going to have to just get the organisation right now. I mean, they can't play, they can't play with certainly with uh, two up front anymore, that's for sure. They've got to just dig in and go for a defensive lineup. So, two guy on, not Neil McCann, because of having to change his mind. He'd thought about bringing on Neil McCann, but the whole picture changed for him when firstly Arena went off for two fouls in a minute. And then Arthur Newman, who appears to have gone, Gordon, for two yellow cards in even less than a minute. Yeah, it was so Andy Flo went off too, and uh, you know, just Rangers just establishing a black floor. I thought Conferman was going off with uh, Flo, who's gone off for, the, for that change there. And for Scott Chevron, and a headed opportunity for Andy Kirk. He was not picked up by the Rangers' defence, and this was a chance. Yeah, it's a good header. I mean, he couldn't have done any better than that. Just uh, flashed in it in the post. And uh, I think that uh, you know, they'll get opportunities like that before then. Ah, so there's no doubt about it. With the, just with the pressure, with the extra players they've got, they'll begin to get uh, chances they'll get at Rangers defence. Gordon Judy battling for possession in the midfield. True grit. Took him out with the ball there. Cut against Amaruso. Good play from Lorenzo Amoruso, finding himself some room to make the clearance and naturally enough only Kenny Miller up at the moment. Petrich is away from him, Grant Murray on the overlap, Parks with a two-man advantage, but still one goal down. Fulton played that off Ferguson. We've played 29 fairly sensational minutes in the second half at Sandcastle. And Craig Levine will hope that his side can take advantage of the position they've got themselves into in that regards. 11 men against 9. But they need a goal. 
And this Gordon shipping it was a real test of Rangers championship credentials. I certainly has. I mean, uh, they'd be delighted to have the lead because they're not going to go and chase and go with nine men, but they've got to just get organised and just hold out here because they, they'll run under tremendous pressure for the next 15 minutes, there's no doubt. They might do a sneak one in the breakaway, but uh, I would doubt if they'll get an opportunity to do, do that with it, with it having two men show up. But I'm interested to know what that's what Newman did there to actually get that red card. Didn't seem anything in that at all. That's uh, Kenny Milne on the pitch for Hawks, the 21-year-old. Only his fifth appearance ever for the club. Gordon Petrich off. Nielsen. Severin trying to work that back into the stride of the fullback. Interception by Alberts. And gets it back from Tugai. A poor pass from Alberts. Which gives possession back to the home team. Juan Joe looking for Severin. A mistake by Alberts. And the pass from Severin in turn goes astray. Tackle well run by Barry Ferguson against Colin Canada. Might have to do it all himself. Bert Conterman being held back by one joke. Still going though, the Dutchman. Fumbled by Antiniemi. And you don't want to do that on Kenny Miller's event. off a couple of challenges there but uh, I can hear me really almost made a mess of that. Kirk back for one Joe again. Steve Fulton. It's Robbie Nielsen. Flipped away by Wilson. Andy Kirk's after it. Back in from Kirk. Away by Amaruso. Tested down by Miller for Ferguson. It's a challenge now for Rangers playing passes with only nine left on the pitch. This has just joined us. Reina and Newman both sent off. But a little bit of mystery signing of the special of Arthur Newman. And we'll be looking to get an explanation for that one later on. Let's hear from let's hear from Jake at the touchline. Very animated Rangers bench down here as you might imagine. And Dick McCann told the team go four three one. He's called for Billy Dodds to warm up. In fact, he's now calling for Billy Dodds to come round. Obviously, he will be interviewed. Obviously, up front to help out the Rangers uh, cause. But Dick McCann very animated indeed. The two yellow cards, I believe, for the cause of the sending off descent from uh, Arthur Newman. It was a yellow, yellow equals red, not a straight red. Yeah, that's what we suspected was the case at the time. And Newman, who'd seen a yellow card, then booked again for descent, which is most unlike the highly experienced Arthur Newman, player who's been through a lot in his time, and you wouldn't expect him to get caught out like that. I'm sure we haven't heard the, left, the last of that. In from Robbie Nielsen. It is clear by Ronald De Boer, only as far as Fulton. Rangers under siege. That was Amaruso winning a good header. Nielsen looking for Cameron. But it's Amaruso who's there. Two guy, De Boer, Albert. Total breakdown communication between Albert and Miller. And that sets up Hart for an attack. Hearts need to show some composure at this stage. They do have 11 players against 9, Gordon, but they have to push it around and keep playing the way they have been in their good spells. It's very hard to, to show that sort of composure. I think you only want to do one thing, that's get forward, get the ball in the box as much as you can. It's hard to, to, to play uh, in a composed way and, and build up in the natural way because the supporters themselves are, are really up and they're there. So, uh, I think they're anticipating something happening here. They're anticipating their team scoring, so they're, they're shouting them on. 11 minutes left at Frank Castle. Rangers lead by a goal to nil. Against 11 man hearts. They have nine. 
Both sides might not be too far away from making a substitution. Good run from Andy Kirk. Gordon Jury was waiting for the cutback. He tried to beat Stefan Kloss at his near post. And it didn't come off. Yeah, good pace again back up. Here he said, no, no option but to shoot there. Like there was nobody to support him because he took all his teammates to surprise there. Lovely ball from Melbourne down the line. Kenny Miller off for Rangers, striker for striker. And Billy Dodds will be preparing himself for a fair bit of running. One Joe's corner kick. Amaruso dominating in the middle. That's Fulton finding Presley. Nielsen. Good play from Nielsen. But not the ball in. Found himself some room with a nice little feint. But then failed to pick out a teammate. Fulton to Murray. Kenny Milne. Again, Strong De Boer. He held himself a corner kick. He does. And Milne immediately heads into the penalty box himself. He's a fair old physical presence there. Alongside Presley Petrich is off, of course. Bobby Nielsen just at the edge of the area along with Grant Murray. The right footer of one Joe. But Conterman's header away. Finds Colin Cameron. Took too long to decide what he was doing, Cameron. And then went Billy Dodds. And it's a Rangers throw. Hart's ready to make another change. Scott Severin will go off and Robert Tomasek will come on. That seems strange at this stage when uh, Hart's going to get the ball on a lot in the box a lot because Tomasek is more of a defensive uh, cover player and uh, continuity player as opposed to Severin who can get in there and strong there and has uh, more goal scoring potential. Harry Ferguson won that well. Almost getting in the way of two guys. Back from Thompson and the cross. Fulton's header. Thompson again. And down from Cameron. Robbie Nielsen. Into the feet of Gordon Jury. Tom Cameron. Stumbling at the wrong moment. And that's a foul by Jury on two guys. Yeah, I think he's acknowledging the foul. He just, uh, just caught him there. Just caught his ankle as he's uh, trying to pull it away. It looked as if it made him a meal of it, though, didn't he? Certainly been an entertaining Sunday afternoon, this one. Never a dull moment. Blink and you'll miss something. You'll certainly miss the yellow card the way it's been going. Two guys interception as Robbie Nielsen tried to make progress down the touch line. His throw in. Almost through for Gordon Jury. A good defending again from Amaruso. He's a key figure at this stage as Rangers try to cling on to what they've got, which is a one goal to nil lead. Houston's throw, again it's Amaruso. Everything in the last few minutes in the penalty box has been his. It's a good ball from Stephen Presley, back out to Nielsen. Into Tomasek, stumbles. Amaruso forces it out, that's Alberts. Murray to Presley. find a way through. Here's Milne. That was intended for Fulton. Cut out by the door. Ronald 
the door relieved of possession by Hanjo. Cameron and Fulton. Two important players if Hart start to find their way through. Kenny Milne had his progress blocked by Billy Dodds. I think Billy Dodds read it well because Kenny Milne's pretty pacey, a bit pacier than Billy Dodds is, but I think Dodds just saw exactly where he was going to put the ball run in there and uh, Kenny Milne just sort of nudged him out of the way. But the uh, Hearts have lost the momentum a little bit. I think it looks like Rangers have weathered the storm just at that point when you think the Hearts are going to put them under severe pressure. Rangers organisation has uh, just about got it right. I mean, minutes left yet, but uh, they've not been under as much pressure as I expected them to be and, uh, when they're two men down. I'm talking about entertaining games. This one certainly promises to be coming up in February. The old farm match, the next old farm match is live on BBC Scotland. As Chip Young would say, miss it at your peril. One o'clock kick off that one. And we've not lacked for entertainment here. One nil Rangers. A string of yellow cards and red for both Claudio Reyna and Arthur Newman. But can Hearts make that two-man advantage count? They're running out of minutes. And Presley loses the ball to George Alberts. He's on his own one against three for Alberts. Great run! Finally, though, it's the slide netting which has rustled. And this was powerful and determined play from Albert. Yeah, that's fabulous when you're down in two men and you're there. Uh, they are trying to keep possession of the ball, look at that, he went all the way through, just couldn't get the angle for the shot, uh, Nemi had the near post covered, he's tried to blast it, but uh, just put it in the side net, but a fantastic run at the stage of the game from George Albert. That's a foul by Robert Tomasek, I think he was lucky to get away with an earlier challenge a few seconds ago, and he's being told that by Stuart Dougal, two fouls in quick succession by Tomasek, and he's fortunate obviously a yellow card. I think he is just uh, going to base if he's just on the field. I think uh, he is quite lucky. Uh, maybe the yellow cards are away for the day now. Who maybe too long a name to go and shoot Google's book, possibly. The all important clock tells us three minutes left. Plus any stoppage time that Stuart Google chooses to add on. Robbie Nielsen for Robert Tomasek. And Nielsen again, Hearts won a good ball in. Gordon Judy. And another unbelievable save from Stefan Claus. Andy Kirk needs convinced that that actually happened because for the second time in the match, Kirk at point blank range is denied by the unbelievable here, Stefan Claus. Yeah, we don't need to look any further for a man of the match now. Gordon Judy's having a, a shot at goal, obviously. Andy Kirk's got in the end of it, and uh, I'm sure he can't believe it. He's used to a fantastic reaction save from Claus getting across there, and uh, I say we don't need to look any further for a man of the match today than Stefan Claus with the saves he's uh, kept his side in this game. I'll be on the next series of How Do They Do That? Because Stefan Claus was heading in the other direction as he saved that with his legs. Quite miraculous. And Rangers' lead is preserved. And I wonder if that is the key moment in the match or how can summon themselves to create another opportunity to salvage something from this match because while well, they'll take a lot of credit, at the moment they will take no points. Tomasek. Back from Fulton to Nielsen. Stick with the BBC for old-fashioned entertainment. Nielsen, Jury, Fulton. Everyone behind it for Rangers. It's Grant Murray on his right foot. Well wide. Uh, he took his time to line it up, didn't he? He saw the opening there, and he saw the three bells across his forehead and just decided that it was a jackpot time, but he didn't catch it properly. I have to say, I think Greg Lee's had an outstanding game as well with the back today for uh, Hart. Uh, Harley put it wrong, and Amoruso 
once again has kept his run up of the next standing. Great piece of work that they for him and uh, everything is cleared. He's uh, reading in the game has been superb. Well, as you said, Gordon, only one man to get any one of the match awards for the performance he's turned in here, Stefan Kloss. Andy Gorham used to reduce opposition teams to tears with his performances for Rangers. And Stefan Kloss produced a performance out of the top drawer here. Can Hearts find a way of beating him in these closing stages? We've played exactly 90 minutes. In from one job. Murray's header, Tomasek. Laid back for Nielsen. Headed away by Wilson. And pumped clear by Billy Dodds. Sprinting out to get to it is Antiniemi. Rangers pretty much staying where they are. The Boer's header. Again at the chase. Lofted forward by Niemi. Again, the Boer with the header. Two guy. Good skills. But he's lost possession. And that's a bad one on Steve Fulton. And a yellow card. Yeah, it was a lovely skill, wasn't it? He was just stretched in there, overstretched there, and just caught Stevie Fulton quite heavily there. You can see there, look at that, right in his ankles, that sore one. Yeah, that's a painful one. You can see the studs going in there. And two guy joins a long list of bookings. Yeah, he might struggle to go up from that. That's a shame to see. I think Steve Fulton's an excellent game today prominent in this match at all times and used the ball well and uh, you, know, you see some challenges that look rather innocuous and players are, are badly injured but uh, that looked a bad one but uh, he struggled to his feet and he doesn't want to go off at this stage. Certainly a lot of hope for Hearts and Craig Levine, the new head coach, in the way they delivered this afternoon. But at the moment, and he knows that the bottom line is Hearts will get nothing from this match unless they can conjure up an equaliser and we're deep in the heart of stoppage time two minutes added on already Amaruso's headed away this is Juanjo lofted back in that's De Boer only as far as Robbie Nielsen off Albert tries again Billy Dodds this time knocks the ball away Colin Cameron collects Juanjo again trying to find himself some room it's Cameron, on his right foot, Colin Cameron, shot blocked by two guys, and two guys after it themselves, of course comes Nielsen, to get there before the touch. Two and a half minutes started, and this might be the last attack for Hart, the last opportunity to salvage something from the match, win from Tomasek. Trying to win it back against Harry Ferguson. And Hart's hopes might just have gone. Yes, this is uh, a, a good thought to get away in that position. He just, he just let him go towards the line. He's not going anywhere. Barry Ferguson and you maybe win the ball back. You maybe get a throw in or something like that. So even if Rangers have to defend a throw in and deep in that area, it's going to be difficult for him. But, uh, Albert's long downfield, Billy Dodds is after it. Bobby Nielsen with a good defensive header. And Antinemi really wants to get on with it for Hearts. The whistle's coming from the Rangers supporters. Not surprisingly, they will settle for this. Stuart Google will keep a close examination on his watch. One final look at it and blown the final whistle. A quite incredible match at Tyne Castle. Three points for Rangers. And it's down to those two. George Albert with the first half penalty. But a string of wonderful saves from Stefan Claus. There could only be one man of the match. And Gordon Judy there, his former teammate, is one who was denied as he tried to get Hearts back on level terms. Three points for Rangers, 13 points behind Celtic, still two games in hand, and I wonder how significant this afternoon's entertainment might be to the destination of the title at the end of the season. Rangers had to tough it out at the end with two men sent off, 
Claudio Reyna, then Arthur Newman, and Stuart Dougal took center stage in the second half as he sent first Reyna, then Newman, down the tunnel. Rangers down to nine men. It was a huge test for them at that stage, a test of character. But they've come through it, and they've got three possibly precious points. Yeah, we knew it was going to be an entertaining afternoon, Rob, but uh, we had no idea how it was going to unfold. Just incredible the way this match developed in, in, set, in terms of the way Rangers were leading at half-time and Hearts were doing well. Had a couple of good openings and a good chase from Claus. Claus kept them in the game at that stage. And then for Rangers to lose two players set off. I just couldn't have expected that either. I'm not sure yet about the, the ones from Arthur Newman and probably uh, Claude Arena was probably a little bit careless in terms of making a second challenge after he'd had a, an innocuous booking. But you have to say that it was so exciting. Hearts will take a lot from it in terms of the performance. Craig Levine can be delighted with his team in the first game in charge. They put everything into the match. A lot of good football. They created opening and another day they'll score a few goals. All Rangers can take from it mainly is the fact that they worked very hard, especially when they were down to nine men. They were organised and they've taken the three points which are vital for them at this stage if they want to stay in the championship hunt. Let's hear from the man of the match, Stefan Klaus with Chick. Stefan, sometimes football matches have to be won with rear guard actions. Uh, you were a busy man today, you had your money. Yeah, it was a difficult game for us and uh, we I think it was a bit lucky that we won the game, but uh, if we want to win the championship again, then uh, I think we have to win those games and I think uh, we showed a, a good uh, performance after we went uh, to seven off and uh, are we all happy that we won the game. You had two wonderful saves from your old teammate Gordon and Jury. Did you see much of them? The first one was a dime. Yeah, uh, Gordon is uh, still a very good player and uh, it was uh, good for me that I could play that save. You couldn't have seen much of the second one you saved down low on the line. Yeah, I was busy in the, in the, in the, in the box, but uh, okay, it was okay. <laughs> Did you feel the worst when two players were sent off for Rangers? Yeah, okay, two is a bit too much <laughs> sent off, so we had to play uh, a lot of players from, uh, at the back, but I think the boys did, did well uh, to defend the, the one goal uh, we had. There's going to be a lot of difficult matches like this between now and the end of the season if they catch Celtic. Yeah, but we are confident and I uh, think we, we, we did well the, the last weeks and uh, with this win I think uh, will give us more confidence so we're looking forward to the rest of the season. And of course you can concentrate on the game in Germany in your home country on uh, Thursday. Yeah, it's a difficult one uh, again but uh, there are no easy games now left. We have to, to get a result uh, to, to uh, <laughs> stay in the UEFA Cup. Do you expect yourself to be as busy on Thursday as you were today? Uh, you never know when you go in the game if it's busy or not. Sometimes you have only one save, sometimes you're, you're busy. English is excellent. You, then. Uh, you have to be prepared for everything. Wonderful performance today, Stephen. You won the Bank of Scotland, yeah. SPL, money of the match. Enjoy the champagne. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. You did, you did well to get that bottle away from the chick. Every team wants a class keeper. Rangers certainly have one. And it was absolutely vital to Rangers this afternoon. It was interesting to hear right at the top of the programme Craig Levine talking about how he might well have been at uh, Montrose Cowden Beat yesterday. It was all an awful lot different for him this afternoon. An incredible match. Rangers won with nine men at the end by a goal to nil. Hearts remain in fifth place. Rangers in fourth. Rangers back to 13 points behind Celtic with two games in hand. Trevor Stephen and Paul Ritchie with me. Um, that was a full-blooded affair, Trevor. Oh, it was, wasn't it? I was uh, no quarter given or expected there. And... Uh, the second half didn't really get going as, as I would have liked as far as the football and spectacle was concerned. But certainly there was plenty of endeavour and uh, a lot of activity uh, around Stuart Dougal anyway. Yeah, let's look at those talking points. Um, first of all, Claudio Reyna, mm -hmm. any doubts, any complaints from Rangers as far as this one's concerned? Well, the, the initial booking that he had was fairly innocuous and this is the one. Um, fair enough, to, to, it's a foul for me, but perhaps a bit harsh to get the yellow card. But I think after that, the second incident, because it happened so soon after, Stuart Dougal was in a position where he really had to react. And I think he did the thing that, was, um, that he could only do, was award the second yellow card. Uh, Claudio Reyna obviously obstructed him. I think he slipped a little bit. He was a bit embarrassed, I think, by Andy Crouch direct running. Yeah. And, uh, and that was it. The red card had to, had to be shown. Yeah, I mean, it was within 30 seconds, and uh, I guess Claudio Reyna, um, and he may have complained, but there was no way he was going to survive having caught the um, referee's eye. Definitely, I think once you do make a, the initial foul, the initial booking, uh, you've got to try and stay away from trouble for 
the next five minutes, but to give away a foul so quickly, and the, the first incident was still in the referee's mind. He had no option to book him. It was a bookable offence, and he had to go. They, uh, very quickly, they were um, they were down to nine men. I think we're still actually going to be looking at the, the incident here regarding Claudio Reina, um, mm -hmm. the, the second one that yeah. actually got him the red card. And um, as we've been saying, there was there was no doubt about it. I mean, there, there is the elbow which um, yeah, I just thought that uh, I just thought that he did lose his footing as he went on because as yeah. Paul said it right on the head there. You keep a low profile when you've been booked, um, and he didn't. He was immediately confronted by uh, Andy Kirk who was very brave in getting the ball and running at him, and he was very wise to do so. Put him on the spot, and uh, Claudio Reina's reaction was to stick his arm out. Yeah, and Rangers just losing discipline at that stage? Yes, they did, but I, I think that was down to, to Hearts' performance as well, because the, there's a lot of good running with the ball, and that makes defenders have to do something. And uh, a couple of fouls were committed that wouldn't have happened unless the Hearts players you know, really got on the ball and made, uh, made those runs. Okay, we can now head back to Tyne Castle. We are going to hear from the Rangers manager, Dick Advocat, who is with Dick Young. Dick, another quiet afternoon at the office for you. Yes, it was a very busy week. We felt the guys lads were in, in a hard way. So the result was excellent. The way we got it was not, not uh, the best performance, but again, on a certain moment, it becomes very difficult with uh, two players out. What did you make of the other things off? Yeah, well, that's a decision of the referee. What can I say about it? <laughs> not why I'm asking you. Well, I think about it, but uh, I, I don't think that uh, it's up to me to say something about it. But defensively, Rangers performed very well today. Yeah, well, if you play with in the away game at Hearts, so even 11 against 11 is very difficult for you. Uh, again, the result was today the most important thing after a very busy week. Uh, don't ask me about the way we played because it was not our best game, but the result makes everything good. I'm not talking about the orders off, but in terms of defensive, uh, the way you play, do you expect that's the way you'll have to perform on, on Thursday in Germany? Oh, I don't hope so, because, <laughs> again, one long ball and can be a go, and uh, closer, he, he saved three, three, three great opportunities for, for Hart, so uh, we must very please the way Kloss uh, played today. So, uh, no, I don't want to play the same on, on the same result. Same result, but not the same number of players to finish. Yeah, yeah. Thank Good you. Dick Advocate there was uh, clearly a happy, a relieved man, Paul, to escape from Tyne Castle with three points. Definitely. I think you've just seen Rangers title credentials to be on show. They're not going to give up this league championship without a fight. And to go to Tyne Castle, lose two men and still come away with a clean sheet and three points, they'll be absolutely delighted tonight. All right, let, let's just have a look, Trevor, at this um, Arthur Newman sending off. Mm -hmm. uh, it would appear that he got two bookings in that very short space of time. This was the initial incident. Mm -hmm. um, Thereafter, it all became something of a mystery. Yeah, again, even that uh, was fairly innocuous, but the foul was given, uh, the booking was given, and then it all became a little bit untidy, and Arthur Newman wasn't happy in accepting that yellow card, and he's having a bit of a chirp at Stuart Dougal, and uh, the next thing we see, literally, is him getting the, net, the other yellow yeah. card, and uh, we believe that was from kicking the ball away, um, but it seems a bit, uh, we're a bit unsure as to what the reason was for that. Well, it's certainly put Rangers in a predicament. You just wonder, um, Paul, I mean, maybe it's just the heat of the moment. Uh, you can't stop yourself um, in a situation like that. Especially with being a, such a big game and just gave away a foul and but all the things that... I mean, the argument's continuing. Yeah, here, it, it is going on. Yeah. I think this is I'm getting the second yellow card. Uh, a lot of commotion going on about the referee. It could be for kicking the ball away. It could be for dissent. Nobody knows only the, the referee, and I'm sure we'll find out in the the not too distant yeah. future. Overall, we've spoken about Rangers. What about Hearts' point of view? How will Craig feel after his first game? He'll be disappointed with the result, obviously, but I think he's got a lot of good things to take out of the game. A lot of good points, a lot of good performances. I thought Robbie Nielsen was outstanding, as well as Stevie Fulton, um, Stephen Presley. Colin Cameron worked hard, but we, we snuffed out the game a bit. Andy Kirk um, created a few chances for himself, and the partnership with him and Gordon Jury as I said, created a, a few chances on another day. They might have scored two or three goals, but unfor unfortunately not today. Sure. Okay, Paul, Trevor, thank you very much indeed for coming in. The action continues on Radio Scotland. Um, you'll be able to hear Motherwell against Hibernian, and then Sports Sound, your call. Um, that all on Radio Scotland, 810 medium wave, and there's also action on both Tuesday and Thursday in the radio. And we, of course, will be back next Saturday night with a full roundup of all the day's action. In the meantime, from Paul, from Trevor, and from me, bye-bye. <laughs>